Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I talk about the NWSL women's soccer, just soccer, only soccer. We have another U.S. women's national team roster drop, this time for the 2023 She Believes Cup. I had a feeling it was going to be coming out around this time, and I was right. The U.S. will be playing Canada, Japan, and Brazil in the She Believes Cup. The U.S.'s first match will be against Canada on Thursday, February 16th. Then we'll take on Japan on Sunday, February 19th, and lastly, Brazil on Wednesday, February 22nd. So we have some tough matches ahead, which are going to be good and much needed challenges for the U.S. When it comes to the roster for the She Believes Cup, I'm not expecting that many changes from the January camp roster. However, I've heard rumors about Kat Macario possibly getting called up along with Tarana Davidson as well. Both of these players are coming back from injuries, so it will be interesting to see if they get called up for these games. Sophia Smith may get called up too. I heard she has also recovered from an injury that she sustained over winter break. And speaking of injuries, I have um, bad news about Sam Mewis. Sam suffered another knee injury and is out for the rest of this year, meaning she'll miss the NWSL 2023 season and the Women's World Cup. That was announced earlier this week. Yeah, that's rough. Knee injuries can take a, can take a long time to, to recover from. Sam was out last year due to a knee injury. Alex Pop, one of my favorite players, was out for a year also due to a knee injury. Yeah, knee injuries, not fun, as you can probably imagine. Get well soon, Sam. At least we still have Christy. Too bad she doesn't get a lot of minutes on the national team, though. Anyway, when it comes to this roster, we could see Macario, Smith, or Davidson, Davidson come back. But besides them, I don't really see any big changes from the January camp roster. A lot of other WASO journalists and reporters aren't expecting that many changes either. So that being said, let's get into the roster, starting with the goalkeepers. I'm just going to guess in advance. It's going to be Nair, French, and Murphy. All right, so for the goalkeepers, A.D. French, Casey Murphy, and Alyssa Nair. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, to be expected. Murphy and Nair got to start in the friendlies against New Zealand. I would like to see A.D. French get to start in one of these games. Since there are three games in the She Believes Cup for the U.S., French should be able to start in one of them. I kind of want to see how Murphy does against Canada or Brazil. I know Nair and CONCACAF last year played against Canada, but I think Canada or Brazil will be a good test and challenge for Murphy. Yeah, I don't really have much to say about the goalkeepers. I just want to see them see them all get some play time. Now on to the defenders. For defenders, Alana Cook, Emily Fox, Crystal Dunn, Naomi Germa, Sofia Huerta, Becky Sabrin, and Emily Sonnet. Additionally, Tierna Davidson is in the final stages of her recovery. She will be training with the team, but she won't be playing in any of the upcoming games. That's still good, though. So the back line in general is going to get challenged big time. I could just leave it at that. <laughs> um, uh, but no, these games are going to be a big test for the U.S.'s defense. Canada, Brazil, and even Japan are teams that are going to want to be on the ball as much as possible. There's a lot of movement with, with those three teams, especially with Brazil. Brazil has a lot of talented and creative players, and it's going to be interesting to see how the U.S. will handle that. When it, when it came to the friendlies against New Zealand, the back line wasn't challenged all that much. The U.S. was able to maintain possession and keep up their attack, but that may not be the case when it comes to Canada, Brazil, or Japan. The back line is going to be facing a lot of attacking pressure, and they need to be ready for that. Huerta and Dunn like to get forward in the attack, which is fine, but they have to make sure they're not caught in transition. They have to get back there and provide support in the defense and in the back line. Fox likes getting forward too, 
Like, she likes getting forward in the attack also, but she's usually good about getting back there when it's time to defend. Garma is a solid center back. <laughs> I think she'll be able to keep up with Canada, Brazil, and Japan just fine. Alana Cook, she did all right against New Zealand, but she she needs more confidence and needs to be more aggressive, like Germa. She needs to be alert and aware of who's around her, who's coming towards her, and so on. I'm really hoping she does well in these games, but it's not going to be easy, especially when Canada and Brazil are quick-moving teams. They want to go fast, and Cook has to be able to keep up with them. She can't let herself get caught off guard. However, the same could also be said about the U.S.'s defense and back line as a whole. Honestly, I think the U.S.'s defense is going to be the thing to watch in these upcoming games. Everyone is very focused on the midfield and attack, but the defense is something that we need to focus on too. Anyway, I said a lot about the defense, so let's move on to the midfielders. For midfielders, we have Lindsey Horan, Taylor Korniak, Rose Lavelle, Christy Mewis, Ashley Sanchez, and Andy Sullivan. And according to Vlatko, Kat Macario should be available in April. So leading up to this roster drop, a lot of Wasso journalists and fans were trying to figure out what is going on with our midfield. It is clear that we need a defensive midfielder or holding midfielder, and people are wondering why Vlatko doesn't call up Jalen Howell or Sam Coffey. I thought Sam Coffey would get called up for these games because if she is, in, if she is comfortable playing as a defensive midfielder slash playing in Andy's position, then these matches would have been good for her to show off those skills. Same with Jay Howell. Just looking at this roster or just looking at this midfield, I'm getting a sense that Vlako could be trying to turn Korniak into a six. When she was playing with Andy against New Zealand, she did all right. But with her, ran, with her playing in Andy's position, she didn't look that comfortable. But that could have been due to having no support from Haran. If Howell or Coffey can be defensive or holding midfielders, it would make more sense to call one of them up than to try and turn Korniak into a defensive midfielder. When it comes to these games, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if Vlaco starts Haran and Sullivan for all three games, unless Leon steps in and tells Vlaco to manage Haran's minutes. I think I would like to see a midfield with Selvin, Korniak, and Sanchez, or Selvin, Sanchez, and Lavelle. And I would like to, I would also like to see Mewis get more minutes, obviously, or at least get to start instead of coming on in the final few minutes to close out a game. When it comes to these upcoming games, controlling the midfield is going to be essential. Maintaining possession is going to be essential as well. Canada is going to fight for possession. They do have Quinn, who is great at controlling the midfield. These three teams are not just going to let the U.S. Um, run the ball around. They're going to put up a fight, and our midfield needs to be ready for that. I am looking forward to Sanchez, though. I really liked her performance against New Zealand, and I can't wait to see how she does in these games. Now, let's move on to the forwards. And for forwards, we have Ashley Hatch, Alex Morgan, Midge Purse, Megan Rapino, Trinity Rodman, Mouse Swanson, and Lynn Williams. I'm guessing Sophia Smith is still recovering, but the attack seems all right. No changes from the January roster. The U.S.'s attack did all right in the friendlies against New Zealand once they got themselves settled and organized. However, these matches against Canada, Brazil, and Japan aren't going to be easy. Their back lines are going to stay compact and tight, and they have experienced defenders who play for clubs all around the world. In the matches against New Zealand, the U.S. was able to get around and get behind New Zealand's back line, but these three teams are not going to be easy to get around. Canada's back line is going to be tough, but the U.S. is needing to keep up their attack and keep applying pressure to the back line. If they can do that, then they'll be able to grab some goals. Granted, they get past Canada's keeper, Kaylin Sheridan, who plays for the San Diego Wave. And yeah, that's easier said than done. <laughs> At the same time, the U.S. attack, and also midfield, has to be aggressive. 
Mal will be able to get around defenders. I would like to see Rodman and Sanchez linking up more in the attack since those two already have chemistry from the spirit. As for Hatch, <laughs> very controversial one. Um, for Hatch, she does get in the box, which is great. But connecting with her, I notice, is a bit of a challenge. She gets in the box and stays there. Um, actually, I think the better... Not really sure of the word. The word I'm kind of having a brain fart. Um, she she stays stationary. I hope that makes sense. Like she gets in the box and kind of just stays stationary where she's at, and because of that, she she will get surrounded by defenders. I've seen this happen with Jill Roard last year with Vafel Wolfsburg. Hatch, much like Roard needs to get more open in the box if she wants to score goals or make attempts on goal. Perhaps try to get her, get her behind the back line and get it up to her that way, but either way, she needs to be open and at least try to make it easier, easier for her teammates to find her. Yeah, so I don't really have much to say about the forwards. There's definitely strong goal scoring potential and good service slash assists potential but the challenge for these guys is going to be breaking through the opposing team's back line connecting in the attack and finishing so yeah these are the same challenges the u.s will be facing in the world cup this summer all right so this is the roster for the 2023 she believes cup the roster didn't change much from the january camp roster so i'll leave the video i did talking about that roster in the description below it's good that Davidson is back, kind of, <laughs> and hopefully we'll see Kat Macario and Sophia Smith in the next international break. I think I heard it's in April. Anyway, that is all I have for you guys today or tonight, and I'll see you all in the next one. Later.